No, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing with David De Gea, Jerry. You know, here's the thing. With him, he always plays really well, if you realize, when United are not playing well. You, you, yeah. you get what I mean? When yeah, United yeah. are playing well, that's where you will see the howlers, you will you'll see, you see the problems. <laughs> So, you know, I do make it a curious case of David Hay. The curious case of David Hay, man. Curious case of David Hay. Hello, and welcome to another recording, post Christmas recording of the Alan Jerry football podcast uh, with me, Jerry, and my buddy Al. What's up, guys? Merry Christmas to all of you. Hope you all are having Merry a good Christmas. Christmas so far. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. It's not ho, ho, ho for quite a few people, obviously. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Recent, yeah, events in, <laughs> recent events in Malaysia and obviously in the UK as well with those who are, you know, going through some tough times. And whoever actually who had a Christmas this year that was different, you know, that was a bit quieter, that was maybe a little bit more meaningful in that sense, you know. But... um. Yeah, um, we when we set out to make this channel, we 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 did it somewhere. I think August, right? Oh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Start of the Premier yeah. League, isn't it? So must have yeah, been the start of the Premier League. Yeah, it must have been August. So I mean, we set the goal to just reach Christmas, you know, and keep putting out content, you know, whether whether we get the views, whether we get the likes, and I think like that's been the most meaningful thing for me that we've made it till Christmas, and now I'm looking yeah. forward to post Christmas in 2022 and all it has to bring to us and. Yeah, which I just like to give you guys that message before we start today. But L, starting with this week's fixtures, Lord Welbeck with a return. Lord Welbeck, where did with that come from? Epic return, man! Holy shit! Yeah, oh my god, where did that come from? So we'll start off with Brighton and Chelsea, guys, because since it was the latest game yesterday, and obviously it was there was a lot of talking points in terms of Tuchel saying that his team was not prepared and. Obviously, complaining about the schedule. I, th- I think this is the first time he's actually uh, managed on the Premier League schedule where you know you play on the 26th Boxing Day and then you play two days later on 28th on the 29th. And wow, that's... I mean, I feel that's that's typical of England. I think that's yeah, something yeah. all managers should expect in that sense. But yesterday, I felt, Al, when I was watching that match, first half, Chelsea looked fine, right? Mm, I mean, second half was the drop off. Yeah, second half was when the drop off, and once Reese James left the pitch, I feel that was a big difference, right? Yeah, because yeah. Reese James was playing left wing back, and and now mm. we recently heard about Chilwell getting his ACL injury as well. I just mm. want to ask you, Al, do you think that his system, Tuchel's system, is starting mm. to be a little bit? It's yeah. okay now with the COVID situation, right? And mm. and with losing players, do you think it's taking a toll a little bit on the team? Because you see, it's an expensive system, right, Al? And and they do a, they do a lot of running, and you see they cover like a very wide area of the pitch. They don't play narrow. They don't play, um, you know, backs against the wall. They actually go very mm-hmm. wide, and then they try to attack, counter attack. And you see now both their I I just I just had this um, little observation. Both their fullbacks are now out Al, with like injuries, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, no, I, I, it's something you expect during the game. So, Tuchel can't say, oh, it's because of the injuries, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all the injuries that happen, it's part of the game. It's it's an occupational hazard, you know, of playing football. You're going to get oh, those that, injuries. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Injuries is yeah. part of the game, man. I mean, I mean, just to answer your question, Jerry, I think Chelsea, their main source of their gameplay really, really comes from the sides, the wings. Mm, so yes. you're, you're talking you're talking about uh, Reese James, of course, Marcos Alonso now, obviously, because um, Ben Chilwell is injured. Um, and of yeah. course, uh, you've got the other guy. Uh, Kelem hudson uh, as well. Kelem hudson yeah. That's yeah, another one. Yeah. So, so the thing is, when teams stop or cut the play coming from the sides, uh, Chelsea just look really, really... I wouldn't say dead and buried, but it looks as though there is a little clot in their system where the ball is not reaching towards the end product. You see, the thing is, Mm -hmm. it is very much a fullback sort of a game that we can see in the top three. But the difference between Liverpool and City that I find is that if you don't get a performance from Robertson or Arnold or maybe uh, uh, Cancelo or or City's left-back for that matter, the 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 others step up to the plate. You know, but I'm struggling yeah. with Chelsea to find whether Yoginho and Ngolo Kante and how they're going to be supplying 
you know the likes of Timo Werner and and Romelu Lukaku because yeah. you see Lukaku coming into the side uh, Jerry I think it gives them a very different dimension I saw that against Villa over the weekend I know we're talking about Chelsea and uh, and uh, Brighton obviously but yeah, Lukaku coming definitely. in is 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 mainly a game play of where you've got a target man in the box you feed him he will score and and we saw that there was a corner yesterday he scored Aston Villa he came on after the second half he scored but the minute that's cut i think that's i would dare say 60% of Chelsea's game play gone out the window unless they get a penalty then you've got your game home but apart from that mm-hmm. you know really honestly i think the second half they just you know credit brighton you know i think i think we we i for one i'm impressed with graham potter i thought he he approached the game really really proactively i thought bisuma had a wow tell you same boy game yeah. you know you know he same <laughs> boy game man yeah he yeah the really same boy game imaju la imaju palu best me palu best me the the, the <laughs> stocks the stocks on bisuma's name i think is rising as we speak so yeah so i wouldn't yeah. be surprised and and l l adam lalana yeah. as well l. yeah 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 don't adam forget lalana, adam lalana yeah, exactly. cuz it was exactly. his sort of touch that that opened uh, up the play for chuturela to cross in you know because he opened up the play and then it was passed out wide on yeah, the yeah, left yeah. side and then Chicharella basically crossed it into well back man you said really good correct, cross correct, pinpoint correct, cross correct. and another yeah. player uh, from Brighton I noticed as well is Tariq Lemty I feel like he's a uh, uh, really good yeah. wing back you know yes, uh, Tariq yes, Lemty yes. as well you know because he had a few chances as well uh, and, and Brighton mm. did have chances L. but I think mm. you're right in terms of the midfield battle I think Brighton were Uh, winning some of yeah, the yeah they were winning the second half yeah 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 they were winning they came up they came out in the second half very proactively and i thought credit lah i mean some we say they even deserve to go on and win that game at chelsea chelsea luckily you know brighton i still think someone like neil mope and all that if it's if it were to be a much more instinctive number 9 you know of course yeah. we can praise well back but you know chelsea would be staring at defeat yesterday but denny wellback right place right time you know prodigal son returns from the dead i tell you we, we've not been speaking I, i i can't remember the last time i mentioned the name wellback you know <laughs> and and seeing wellback scoring a goal i tell you you know gives gives you the 2011 2012 sort of like <laughs> memories yeah. flashback coming in but yeah no, good 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 for denny wellback i mean right place right time and and is i'm happy to see that he still has his number 9 finishing boots on but men yeah, still got it men still got it yeah 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 men still got it i think i think yeah i think what i think is chelsea is struggling to really get on the score sheet a lot you know um mason mount on the right hand side they over i think they over line on mason mount on the right hand yeah, side very, very much i think so. yeah. i think it's because they don't have too many wingers right now at the moment i think I'm not too sure what's the situation with um mm. Werner Havertz and even um mm. uh Pulisic because Pulisic is in and out of the team. I feel that if Mount's put in the middle he could maybe open up the game a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. that's one of the flaws I've seen in Liverpool's game this year as well because mm. when the fullbacks aren't firing they they don't get much service you know and there's lack yeah. of creativity on the pitch and that's yeah. what we saw against Leicester you know because um I know it's trying everything but it, it didn't really work out and sometimes mm. you need that creativity like a medicine a james medicine for example yep, like yep. a emil smith row like a phil foden and de bruyne and silva basically i mean it, that's why city can afford not to have a striker and still Correct. run Correct. through teams out because they yeah. have the they have the creativity you know they know they're going to create a chance however slow their build up play is they know they're going to create a chance and i think that's what chelsea lack a little bit because defensively strong at the start of the season but suddenly recently like conceding a lot of late goals you know Mm. Oh yeah, yeah I mean yeah. I mean Chelsea Chelsea's got to sort it out I mean I mean I'm looking at Thomas yeah. Tuchel I'm thinking he you know what would have seen be seen as a very very easy run in has been not exactly going according to plan it's not according to the script isn't it I mean and Chelsea are losing points and now look yeah. as though they are within touching distance to Arsenal and and you mentioned just now at the start of the podcast you know when we started off in august we were talking about this that you remember when we were talking in august how we were 
you know worried about Arsenal writing them off. But look at it. I mean, look at it now, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's a like story Goatsdale. Goatsdale has changed everything. Aaron yeah. Goatsdale, Aaron <laughs> Bale, Aaron changed Goatsdale everything, man. Yeah, 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 exactly. And some sort of defensive stability, I think, has helped yeah, them, yeah. right? Correct. But right. the thing about Arsenal, their most potent threat is their attack. Sim- mm. Simple mm. as that. Whether it's Martinelli, whether it's Saka, whether it's Emil Smith Rowe, whether it's Odegaard. Yeah, and therein lies the difference, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? And um, obviously, Arsenal putting five past Norwich that day. Obviously, uh, we won't speak about Arsenal too much because I think yeah. your big game was against City this weekend. And, and that's definitely yeah. something we're going to get into. I think that'll be a proper yeah. test for Arsenal. But moving yeah. on, uh, obviously, with the Chelsea situation, I, I think Tuchel just needs to find some sort of stability in the squad and then that balance, I think, can come back. But Speaking about balance, Al, yeah, what where's the balance gone from? Man United, man. <laughs> well, I man, mean, I, I was I, watching, I, I was watching a video today, um, about um Simon Jordan from Talkspot. Even though I don't like that channel, I still watch it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> and what he was saying is like, um, he noticed Fernandez recently has sort of been um reading into his own hype, and he feels like. Fernandez is like the chairman of his own fan, fan club, you know. Bruno right, Fernandez right. is the the, the 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 chairman of the Bruno Fernandez fan club. It's like he's sort of gone off the ball quite a bit. Obviously, yeah. it's it was yeah. a team performance, Al. But what what could you, could you tell me? I think we were just talking about how the first goal was too easy. Yeah, how Horrendous, they just allowed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, firstly, foremost, I think the way Newcastle were playing it. Mind you, this is Newcastle United season 2021-2022. And the Newcastle United season 2021-2022, forgive me for saying this, but they have not been really, really good. They've been awful to watch at times, you know. But I mean, they've, yeah. Been, they, yeah. they, they've been picking up the, play, the places. I thought against Liverpool, they weren't that bad. But they were really good against Man United. And and when when Alan St. Maximin, which is, which is you know, you, you, we know his gameplay, cut in shoot you know and direct it, it, pace it, it, yeah direct pace and it, it it just baffles me how man united diogo dalo especially if you think about that first goal how he was sold so easily towards the right and maximum just cut in towards his right and just pops it in the in the in the corner of the goal post and i think that that was very poor defending i thought rafael Varane really really very much so lacking match sharpness harry maguire looks like he, he just gives me and I believe most United fans palpitations whenever we watch him. <laughs> and and yeah, man, I mean Man United, I think they look it, it, it's it's a bit odd because it, it looks very disjointed and, and we've got no There's a lack of cohesion. Start. There's a lack, yeah, of, lack cohesion. of cohesion. We, we've got no only yeah. to say this is just vibes and no tactics anymore because there's a proper tactician at the club now. And mm-hmm. now maybe it's time, maybe it's time for the players to just have this or rather for us to say. It could be the players being ill-disciplined. I'm, I'm looking, you see, I'm looking at this whole style of how they've been coming up to play. And I thought when they played Crystal Palace, the first half in particular was where maybe uh, a, a very a very cover band style like of Gegen pressing was in 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 full colour. You know, it was not a full, full Gegen pressing per se, but you could see it. But it was missing against Norwich, it was missing against Newcastle. So what seems to be the problem? You know, and and obviously, you get a hard-working guy in the second half coming in, running all around, getting into the right places. Mind you, having not played a lot of games as well, but still having to pop in and score a goal, which prompts you to ask the question, what's your Rashford's doing? What's Cristiano doing? Bruno Fernandes has been having nightmares for, what, three, four, five games, I think now. I've, I've you know, I have not, I've been... He's been having a really inconsistent run. But I think the talking points that we can talk about a little bit is the fact that this player's made a little bit of uh, some headlines uh, as per our dear old friend Gary Neville because of how there was a lack of uh, appreciation towards the away fans and not thanking yeah. them. And, and and shrugging shoulders a lot just to, you know, take take your point of the Winch top bags, basically. What, yeah, what Gary yeah. Neville said, winch bags to be exact. Yeah, winch bags. And, and it, it could be harsh, but it's true, you know. I mean, you, the, you put hands on hips, shrugging shoulders, it's not going to get you a goal. It's not going to get you anything. I, I'm Cristiano of all people know this. And I'm trying to look at this on a perspective of a player, right? I mean, let's imagine if both of us were players, Jerry, I mean, and, and lost 
we're in a team which is disjointed. Should we or should we not go and thank our fans, especially in away games? It's almost as though it's a culture, yeah, right? It's, it's almost as though it's, it's, it's mandatory. mandatory. Yeah, it's, I, and, I think and, I think more so. I think Al, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. I think I think it means more when your team hasn't had a good performance. Obviously, correct, when you have a good performance, it's, it's easy fine. to go and, 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 and clap yeah. the fans. But the fans are already yeah. in like you know um, cloud nine. You know they don't care when yeah. they come off. But I think correct. it's those moments where they've traveled for hours, right? Yeah. Just to yeah. come and and see a shitty performance, they would definitely. definitely like you know. I think that's the time where you really need to go and thank them for their support yeah. because whether whether mm. shitty's uh, performance or not, away fans are always going to give you that support, right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, like you've got to go on. I mean, if I were to be a fan in the stadium, and I'm thinking, and and here's the thing, yeah, just to touch upon this point, you know, about how this is football without fans is really nothing. I mean, we we're, we're from Malaysia, but we stay up crazy hours just to watch. Sometimes, you know, a, a team playing against Rotterdam or Scunthorpe United in in an FA Cup or a League Cup game or whatever, you know, and and. That's that's Malaysian fans for you, and and this is fans in the stadium, which is not getting their teams being somewhat appreciative. And and here's the other thing: if you're a United player and you're looking at your senior players, Fernandez, Ronaldo, just walking down the tunnel just like that, what does that do for you? Is it yeah? Is it something yeah. of where is that's okay to be done? You know how, what's going on? So of course this mm-hmm. is not this is this these are some situations that you know are going to be tackled and i'm sure handled in the dressing room but yeah if, even to talk about cristiano just to touch upon him a little bit i think at the moment he he's the focal point because there's so many divided opinions because he's arrived united are terrible united are rubbish because he's arrived he doesn't press he doesn't this he doesn't that and blah 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 and all of these things but here's the other thing which i which I thought about, and I also mentioned to you, to yourself and as well, the producer of the show, right? And I said that Ronaldo finds himself in a bit of a sticky situation at the moment because he's never been at a club, in my opinion, where he's he is the man, the showstopper, the main event. You know, it's always been him featuring some other guys. You know, we've had Ramos, yeah. Casillas, Marcelo, all these players at Real Madrid. Juventus, you have the big Italians over there and so on and so forth. But now, it's as though the world is on his shoulders and the United team is on his shoulders. I don't know necessarily whether this man can cope with this. I mean, I mean, hats off, yeah, best player in the world at the moment, all of that, yada, yada, yada. But I I really think he finds himself in a, in a slight bubble here because it's not just about waiting in the box, scoring your goals, doing your shoes. I think now... It's a little bit more than that. Maguire might be the captain, but I think, you know, let, let's not kid ourselves. I think he is the guy, right? I mean, anybody can tell you that. He's, he's yeah. Mr. Man United at the moment. I know football is a team sport, but I think he's got to do that. I want to say Roy Keane. He, he either yeah. is or should be honorary captain, basically. <laughs> correct, 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 correct. Yeah. Spot on. So You were saying Roy no, Keane, sorry? Yeah, yeah. He, he has to be somewhat of a slight Roy Keane Right, Roy right, Keane style right. man at the moment and, and you know pick yeah. up the team you know put things right on the pitch because Ralph Rani can only do as much when they're playing on the pitch but yeah you know terrible performance against the Man United and they're facing Burnley next and Burnley is damn physical as you would know Sean Dyke yeah. is not going to be saying go easy on them he's going to say go hard on them so that's going to be an interesting one 11, to see 11 brick slabs FC <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah, I think I think with the Ronaldo situation, Al, it's like mm-hmm. easy and simple. I think he feels that he didn't do enough on the day to go and mm. basically clap the fans. I think maybe he felt yeah. personally he didn't do enough to get their yeah their gratitude or whatever. That's why he just wanted to leave the pitch as soon as possible. But I think, like you said, there are certain leadership qualities in places like England and Germany, especially where there's mm. a lot of. If I mean. If, Football and fans. I mean, it's yeah. like a religion. The emphasis on them. Yeah, they live for it. They live yeah. for it. You know, yeah. there's some people yeah. out there with like no money, very little money, very shitty yeah. jobs, shitty lives, but they still that that is their release, right? Every yeah. week. Right? Yeah. yeah. So whether yeah, exactly. or not you performed well or not, right? It's especially during the away games. Like, uh, I feel because uh-huh. home games, 
home games, the fans are just there, you know, and, they, and they're yeah, vibing. Yeah. But it's the correct, away days because they get abused, rain mm. on, you know, like having mm. to travel all those miles and everything. Correct, yeah, but correct. aside from that, I think the Ronaldo situation, uh, I think you can call, I mean, you can look back at his time at Juventus, right? So after mm. Ronaldo left Juventus, Leonardo Bonucci, one of mm. Juventus legends, basically, and really a rock at the back, what he said about it. Ronaldo and and he's I think after reflecting um, on his time at Juventus, he said Ronaldo's presence had a big influence on us. Just mm. training with him gave us something extra, but subconsciously players started to think his presence alone was enough to win games. Mm. We began to mm. fall a little short in our daily work. The humility, the sacrifice, the desire to be mm. there for your teammates day after day. Over the last few years, I think you could see that, and I think you Juventus did fall into a little bit of a hole there you yeah, know with yeah. uh, his last season them sacking Andrea Pirlo you know mm. the Pirlo thing not really working out and then yeah. um, the old manager having to come back and, and, and try right, to sort right. things out steady the ship and, and Al, I think we said I mean I said it with chest the day Ronaldo mm. signed that he was going to mm. elevate the whole place you know mm. but it seems there's been so many times that he's had to individually do it you know and he's not had yeah. the support Basically, yeah, and he's, I and think, he's 36, Jen. Yeah, and he's 36. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He needs that support, man. And I, I thought honestly, all the young players would be, you know, suddenly channeling their inner Ronaldo's, you know. But mm. also, I think Marcus Rashford is a big miss for United in terms of form. I think his mm. form has definitely dropped, and 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 I think he's struggling to find like the the perfect role for him in that team as well. But yeah, I think credit to Newcastle on the day, and um, El. Last thing I want to say, like De Gea, man. I after yeah, Mourinho yeah. left and and those few seasons where he was PFA Player of the Year, right? I thought De Gea has gone off the ball, you know. And I thought, you know, yeah. he might be reaching some sort of a moment in his career, you know, where he needs to make some decisions on whether he wants to stay in the Premier League, blah blah. blah. But man, this season he's just showing to me yet again why he's one of the best in the world, man. Yeah. I mean, that's like undeniable. You can say. I mean, and, and, that and last chance from um, Almiron, Almiron, right? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. yeah. No, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing with David De Gea, Jerry. Sorry. You know, here's the thing. With him, he always plays really well, if you realize, when United are not playing well. You, you, yeah. you get what I mean? When yeah, United yeah. are playing well, that's where you will see the howlers, you will you'll see, you see the problems. <laughs> So, you know, I do make the it. Curious make it case of David De Gea, like, the curious, curious case, case of David De Gea, man. <laughs> curious case of David De Gea. <laughs> oh man all right so moving on from united i i think we've mentioned everything that we had today and um yeah just more commitment more hard work i think we need to see mm. from the team and, and that's all i think the fans and you know the rest of the team because they have everybody there they have the right they're all in the right place to be in their careers you know they just have to make it work that's all so moving on l obviously speak about liverpool and um, their shock defeat. Yeah, the foxes, Leicester. fox out of the box. Yeah, uh, outfoxed, <laughs> uh, outfoxed by Leicester. And I think one of the, the the major the major stats I think was the fact that they had hadn't scored for the first time in thirty six games or something like that. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, that's a, so that's a Leicester time. Leicester prevented uh, Liverpool from scoring. And to be mm. fair, I think. Um, the defeat is all all down to Liverpool, and, and uh, mm. it's it's definitely the fault of the team because they didn't take their chances. As simple as that. I think mm. obvious the obvious one is the Salah one. He tried mm. to pop for that rebound, but he couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like too short, you know. I think if he was taller, he could have just like nudged it. Bo- uh, just caressed it into the net. He tried to hop and then you know hit the bar. <laughs> this is yeah. so funny, man. But yeah. I feel that Sadio Mane chance was the clincher. Because oh, yeah, it was. right it after was. that, Lukman yeah. came on and he scored, right? And yeah. that Sadio Mane chance, I think ten, nine times out of ten, you'd beg him to 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 place it, you know, to mm. just smash it mm. off. Because it was right there, he had his time, and yeah, a lot of Liverpool fans saying that Mane's time is over and blah blah blah. I I think mm, that's a bit what he's given to Liverpool over the last few years, I think, deserves a little bit more credit. Yeah, yeah. But what I do think. I do think Liverpool can afford another attacker or two, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's Javier Elliott coming back, whether it's one of the youngsters, or whether it's even a signing 
in the in the January window or the summer window because mm. you see what Jota has done to that front trio. He sort mm. of created some competition there. I feel, and um, he sort of kept them on their toes a little bit. You know, um, obviously he's taken a little bit of the burden from money because he's the second top scorer in the club right now. But yeah. I do feel having a left winger, basically Mane's position, could could um, elevate his performance or, you know, I think motivate the team. But enough about Liverpool. I think on the day, obviously that goal by Lukman, great goal. He he, he, yeah. he ran into that what a goal that by the was way, there. Gary. Yeah, and it, it was left by Henderson and Trent. They didn't cover fast enough, you know. Yeah. Even Van Dijk, yeah. I think he covered his position well in terms of trying mm. to block the shot. But I don't think Alisson should have been beaten on his near post. I think definitely that that, that was a... I think it, looking back, Alisson could have done better a little bit there. But Leicester, man, I mean, on the back of that League Cup game where they played their first full team, right? Hmm. And then they played City on Boxing Day. Uh, so they played Liverpool on Friday. They played City on uh, Boxing Day. And they played uh, Liverpool again. Uh, two days ago. I mean, yeah. just what? In a matter of six days, three games, you know, almost six, seven days, three games. Yeah. And, and I feel... And, and the yeah. other thing, Jack, they have, they've had, I think this is, this is one of their makeshift teams, you know, against this Liverpool team, against you know, the game before this. So I thought, looking at the side that they put on with all these people out and injuries and whatnot, I think it's a massive three points for them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because against City L, when uh, I mean City were coasting in that first half, right? I yeah. mean, Raheem Sterling was having a party, Ramirez as well, yeah. and I think it seemed I had solidified. You know, they were four nil up, but how quickly Leicester turned that around? Yeah, and, and, and yeah. It was, with a quick smash and grab, you were thinking like, "Oh my God, is Leicester actually going to do one in City unboxing?" Yeah, no, you know? I, you know, we're and, set and, for a grandstand and, line. Huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, think. I think Madison has slowly picked up his form again, you know. But yeah, it's just that correct. lack of defensive solidity that lets them down, right? Yeah. And maybe maybe Rogers should try using NDD as a centre back even more because like that day he played centre back against Liverpool and kept the clean sheet, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, I just, yeah. just touch upon this funny funny bit. Yeah, I was watching that City Leicester game. And I'm thinking when Leicester got the third goal, and then of course, obviously, I think Laporte got the fifth goal for City. And I was thinking, ah, yeah, Potong team betul. I mean, I was I was yeah. really looking forward for a for, for a comeback four, or four, something. You know, and, you know, but, yeah, you know, like, the City City too strong. Yeah, bloody like, hell! Someone someone take your chances against City because like we will get to City in a while. But you know, yeah. it's like the teams <laughs> yeah, have yeah. the chances against City, but they just don't take them, and they just allow correct, City correct, to just correct. come through. Yeah, you know? yeah. My God, I mean, like. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I think Liverpool would be disappointed, but I think that sets up the Chelsea, Chelsea Liverpool, Liverpool game thing. very yeah, well. Yeah. You know, I think that would be the title clean. Shall I speaking about Liverpool and Chelsea, having already spoken about Liverpool and Chelsea, mm. um, definitely I think that would be a very important game this season, and we get to see who comes out on top. After that, obviously Salah, Mane, and a few of those leaving on Fcon, uh, leaving for Fcon. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. After this fixture, but I guess with Leicester, where where do you see Leicester right now? I mean, what hmm, do they need to do? What do they need to do? I I feel like they because. Obviously, they have Amati, they have Sumare, they mm. have a few, uh, uh, Soyuncu, Johnny Evans, but I do think, and, and, and they're definitely missing Ricardo Pereira, I think. That's one, yeah. one, one yeah. player they're missing a lot, Ricardo mm. Pereira, you know. Um, Wesley Fofana as well. If you think about it, Wesley Fofana is a, a big miss. full year without Wesley Fofana as yeah. well, you know. That's a big miss, so, yeah. I, I think definitely defensive injuries have, have, have blighted Leicester a lot, mm. but... I think you see what Leicester have in Madison, James Madison, is something that Liverpool don't really have, right? Mm, mm. Because obviously on his day, Chamberlain, Thiago, and Henderson, I think they can be quite creative. But mm. it's just that, that that pure number ten that 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 Madison is, you know, and yeah, sort yeah. of Emil Smith Rowe, sort of a Phil mm. Foden or Kevin De Bruyne. I think Liverpool just definitely finding the space and you know, yeah, they creating. miss a lot of creativity. You see, because yeah. after Coutinho left, they were relying heavily on the front three, right? And the front three were right. just flying at that, at that point. 
But now, as the front three is losing a little bit of form, I mean, Firmino is not really in the team. Jota's definitely yeah. come in there. And and Mane and Jota can't be carrying the team every... I mean, there have been so many times where Salah's had an off day, you know? Mm, mm. I think that's where they need someone to feed them the passes, someone to create mm. those opportunities for them, you know? Yeah. Instead yeah. of having that slow build-up, you know, obviously Liverpool from the right-hand side, Trent and Simicas or Robertson from the left, you know? I think through the middle, they need a lot more um, creativity and, and, and yeah. direct passes and stuff like that. And I think that's what Liverpool missed. No, and, 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 um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, looking at Leicester, I think Le- Leicester's had a bit of a funny season because when they beat Man United 4-2, I thought, you know, okay, this is going to be a slight renaissance. But, you know, it, it got really bad very quickly. You know, and and defensively they have been really shaky. Like I thought, Soyun Chu and, and Johnny Evans have looked massively mm. a shadow of themselves that we saw last season, right? And Jamie Vardy also very off and on. Here Nacho off and on. Madison, however, very very positive signs there. Obviously, I see we he didn't have the best of seasons last season. I thought, you know, but this season really coming into the team. But but Leicester, I think looking at it. This is definitely a big result for them. You know, I I think on, on Liverpool's perspective, you can say that you might have results like this sometimes. You know, you miss a penalty, ball just doesn't go in the net. You know, some players off for money, missing a sitter, all of these things. These things sometimes can happen. You know, you would have games like this sometimes. But for Leicester's perspectives, I think they should kick on. They should definitely kick on from this because... I think those off-form players have to start performing. Even even Yuri Tillman, sir. I, I mean, I look at him and I'm thinking, he hasn't really been playing the way we saw him playing last season. So, Leicester, if they can find their form with all these key players and firing again, I think, yes, they definitely can be a force. On Liverpool's perspective, on the other hand, it's going to be interesting to see how after the FCON, what's going to happen because I think Minamino, Diego Jota, they've got to start supporting a little bit. Definitely Jota. I think Jota, we're going to see a lot of him playing 90 minutes and Firmino as well. I think Firmino is going to be one of those players which is going to be playing a very, very big role in this team when Salah and Mane are not there. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see, man. I mean, mm-hmm. looking at it, what's going to happen because of FCON as well and looking at the gap that City have I hope this is not going to be a, a pull away. La. You know, I, I really run do. away. Really yeah, do. basically, like the yeah. city is starting to make the title race boring, man. I mean, we correct, can't correct, win correct. The title yeah. race, but they, I mean, they've been that consistent. I can't fault them. And, and Pep is starting to look like whatever league he's in, he's just a serial winner. I mean, taking yeah. away the Champions League, taking away everything. It just seems like during this time, his team's just. Yeah, they just kick on, isn't it? They just get, you know, re- really difficult to beat. I, I was really thinking, I mean, you know, about briefly. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I, you know, as we speak about Brentford City, right, dude, I was really thinking, okay, I'm looking at this game, I'm thinking the game uh, the day before. You know what? This could be an upset, like, you know, Brentford, it very could. attacking side. Yeah. You know, and but, to be but, fair, Al, to be fair, I mean, the first three chances were all Brentford and yeah, they just didn't yeah, take yeah, it. They were missing and they were missing some of their players, you know. They, they correct, correct. And, and suddenly, boom, Phil Gascoigne Foden. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, with a good goal you know just beating slightly the VAR offside trap but yeah City from then on I think second half onwards I thought they were they already got a foothold in the game but yeah but I mean cre- credit Brentford they looked like they were in the game but I didn't at any point feel like you know what City are on the ropes here they didn't look on the ropes lah. Nathan Ake also looked quite solid as well credit to him you know so yeah, man, yeah. City, City yeah. running away, like what's going on, like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say. Obviously, yeah, we'll end on the City thing and I'll just ask you a question, Al, at the end of the yeah. fixture, the fixture listing and the whole England's yeah. tradition of having the PEX fixture list. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on that at the very end, but yeah. my God, City, Al, I mean, we said they might suffer without a striker, right? Yeah. But if they're creating like that left, right, centre, I think, I think Pep has found a system now where he can play Bernardo Silva a lot deeper, right? So yeah, you've got yeah. two deep line playmakers with De Bruyne, De Bruyne and um, uh, Bernardo Silva, and one yeah. sitting midfielder. So that just opens the floodgates for players like Foden, Sterling, yeah, Mares, Grealish yeah. to just 
do what they want and have their way with the opponent. I think that's one thing, right, that saved City a lot. And um, mm-hmm. I think won them the title over the years. One thing that's really won them the title over the years, if you notice, is that final pass. Whether it's by the mm-hmm. Brana, whether it's by uh, Bernardo Silva, or yeah. you know even the attackers, is that final pass or, or that one moment during a match where they can instantly change it, you know? Correct. And it's almost you feel the game is very precise grasp, and then they grab it back in in, in yeah. one second you know yeah. and one thing i feel because city takes so much time on the ball they keep possession they can you see their slow build up play just takes time whereas liverpool yeah. what, what guardiola said about liverpool is like we don't attack as fast as liverpool he said yeah they yeah. can go from zero to hundred like way quicker than city does but yeah. city with their slow build-up play it's so organized it's so structured yeah it's so yeah. seamless it's so smooth i can give you all the words in english vocabulary mm. right that's what that's what just makes them dominate games and even though okay la, they're under the car so they are backs against the wall during some mm. moments in the match they can instantly you know play high and put the pressure back you know and um yeah definitely i think one thing that should be mentioned is the squad depth and we know the players that City have. Yeah, but yeah. My God, if, if they get a striker next year, Al, let, there's no it, need to watch it, Premier League. We we'll, we'll know who wins. Man. We'll know, we'll yeah. know who wins, man. Obviously, Ferran Torres um, leaving Went City. To Barca, to Barca, yeah. I think he was just too annoyed with all of the... the <laughs> it was like, am I a winger? Am I a striker? What are you guys doing here? Man? I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. No, at least yeah. I'll go to Barca in that clear role. But yeah, I... I I give props to old man Pep because I, mm. I, I am a big Pep criticizer. I feel like there have yeah. been situations in his career where he's sort of fallen short, been a bit stubborn. But when it comes to the league and a course of a 38 a domestic game season, league, he's the man. La. Yeah. A 38 yeah. game season, 40 game, 40 plus game season, you can't. I, I think he's, he's one yeah. of those in terms of consistency as well because, like, this will lead me to discuss it. I think we'll end here, guys. And I'm just going to end this with one question for Al. Do you think, Al, that this um, mm. Premier League fixture list, right, in the middle of the season, especially in December and January, do you think it, and obviously taking into account, because Ralph Rannick basically laid it all out in one of his press conferences, he said England's only league with three cup competitions, right? Yeah. France definitely has it, but they've um, recently abolished the third one. Yeah, yeah. So England is the only, and I can't think of anything else but monetary reasons. Mm. Just mm. like it's a Carabao Cup, you know, it's not even the League Cup anymore. It's the Carabao mm. Cup. Mm. I mean, let's be real. Taking into account the three Mickey Mouse Cup, is some would call it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Taking into account the three competitions plus this fixture list where they play on Boxing Day and then two days later, do you think mm. that could be changed? Or do you think we should just get on with it because that's what makes the Premier League the Premier League and that's what makes English football so intense? So just differently, what, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, well, you see, here's the thing. If we can just close our eyes and just put aside the salary bit for a bit, yeah? And, and just <laughs> let's, 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 let's all forget yeah. that they, they, they are millionaires and let's... Let's yeah. just talk about them being normal working class people. I think you can see you could you could sympathize a little bit about this whole Christmas, Boxing Day, New Year ish fixture list. Because here's the thing, you know, this thing, this whole complaint uh, has been going on for a long time, and and I think it's been amplified a lot by Klopp. Uh, Tuchel recently, and Ralph Ranjik made some big statements, and and we'll come to him in a while. But these statements have been there for a while. And, and here's the other thing, is that the other leagues don't have this, you know, Jerry. Or rather, they have it in a, in a different style, mm. which prompts yeah. you to think, uh, is just, this just going to, to be a just burnout? Just short, to shortly interrupt me, sorry. I, yeah, no way, go on. I, I remember Suchek once saying that um, he was being interviewed after a Boxing Day match and he said usually this time he'll be eating mince pies and eating like, you know, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> his Christmas, there you his go. Christmas pudding. So, so he said he feels so right? weird, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, and, and, and you know, the human side of the game, I, we speak about this sometimes. 
it's a little bit tough lah thinking about it lah. You know how are you gonna get them to perform at 100% when they are when their hearts not in 100%. I mean, mm. of course, these are professionals. Or they don't even have they, enough time for recovery because two days, is, three days is not enough time for recovery. Correct, correct, I mean, taking correct. into account the intensity of the Premier League, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, there's always the 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 comment that says, oh, you know, when you look back at the 70s, and the 80s, the 60s, and the 50s, they all played. You know, game in, game out, and so on, and so forth. But football was way different back then. You know, it, it's not as combative as it is today. So, like I said, if you if you put aside the salary bit for a while, uh, I think there is a f- small form of sympathy from my part. Definitely, I I do I do see it as pity these fellas as well. But but I I can't help but dilute my mind with the fact that. These guys are have sports physiotherapists. They've got chefs at home. They've got this and they've got that and they've got this and they've got that, which prompts you to think they ought to be ready for a game that happens two days in a row and so on and so forth. But of course, you know, Jurgen Klopp would definitely disagree with me. I know he would. I know he'd definitely say, at the end of the day, that's that's going to be bad towards the team. You know, the way I look at it, the FA could definitely change things because you see, the thing is, again, ah, uh, Jerry, ah. Uh, And and I'm just I'm just I'm just talking about this from my opinion. I think yeah. the commercial approach of having this sort of games in the English games fixture list is a part of the reason. Because if you think about it, uh, if you can have a World Cup, which is not going to be in May, June, or June, July, or whenever it is, and and you shift it to some mm-hmm. godforsaken date, I think changing the fixture list from an FA standpoint is just chicken feet. If you think about it, it's not going to be difficult mm-hmm. to do. You see, mm-hmm. so again, we, we it prompts you to think: is this is this a commercial approach? Is this something which is based on dollars and cents? Which comes mm-hmm. to talk about, which comes to which brings us to the point of this whole Ralph Rangnick uh, argument. Now, what he said, in my opinion, if you're talking about it from a cultural standpoint, definitely yeah. he's out of order, lah. You know, because I. The English League Cup is is I know people say England very cultural blah blah blah. It, it, it's it has been a traditional cup of where this cup has always been a youth team cup. You see, so if I look at it from from that perspective, does that mean that teams cannot put out a a a, a first eleven and five substitutes? I don't think so, dude. I think. I think Liverpool, Man United, heck, Nottingham Forest, anybody could be able to put in a first eleven that doesn't comprise of their first starting, you know, their 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 first important squad team members. They could, you know, let's say for example, Liverpool. Liverpool could play the 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 likes of uh, Callum and all of his players without having to play Allison, for instance, right? So yeah, I I I think that from Ralph Rangnick is a little bit. I think that that's a little bit overstepping the mark. But again, again, I see where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Okay, I I see it from the perspective that he is talking about it because of his team not being able to have a recovery process. But that being said, I think if managers want to look at this and say we want to put our focus on the Champions League and on the league, I think managers should start playing a first eleven consisting of their under 18s or under 21s in their yeah, reserves exactly. and so forth. You know, okay. I I, I think that's the only way to go about it, <clears throat> and there's the only way. And, and credit to Jurgen Klopp, I think he he's been he's been doing this for some years right now. I think Jerry, I just think rotating the been, squads, basically coming out with yeah the most like bizarre squad sheets. Like correct, correct, <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. He, he you know he's been doing. I think he he did it for the FA Cup once or so, which where he received some flack if you remember. And then yeah, was saying, he did it against oh, Everton. You see, he did it against Everton, right? And he played yeah. all the youngsters, but the youngsters that, ended up winning one nil. Yeah. yeah, and it was okay, against uh, Anc- Anc- Ancelotti. Was upset, you know, because he was there you like, go. yeah, was there his, you go. yeah, yeah. But but I think I think that's the way to go. But if you're going to say cancel the competition as whole, mm. I know France doesn't have it. I mean, France used to have it. Germany doesn't have it. Italy, yada yada. But all all of those things, yeah. I think, yeah. for England because of the cultural yeah. standpoint, I think you should keep it. Keep it. Maybe don't name it Carabao Cup, lah. I mean, that's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's like so obviously like yeah, we're doing it for the money, guys. Like no, yeah. screw naming yeah. the cup a yeah. proper name. You know? Yeah. No, yeah, I mean yeah. like okay. I mean just to just to end with this, I think 
England does have the resources to see their yeah. squads through, right? Yeah, you see definitely. Chelsea have like a billion players out loan. They can easily, you know, yeah. call back those players or, or come up with yeah. some sort of system which works out for them. Um, the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, mm. Arsenal, all these teams have good academies with a lot of players and those could be a big chance for players to play. And yeah, um, definitely. it could, it could. Obviously, I think the League Cup could be done with. The, I think mm. the FA Cup could be extended. You see, the FA Cup could be extended, maybe, to cover mm. like a lot more teams. You know, and oh, um, yeah, that, that could be, yeah, that could be. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the FA Cup fair. should go yeah. out all the way to football Sunday League. You know, <laughs> that's like, fair. You know, Sunday League oh, being man. drawn against yeah. like Premier League, yeah. oh, that would be hilarious. But yeah. I do feel the Boxing Day thing. It's a very English culture. It's like yeah, we play yeah. on Boxing Day, then we go back and spend time with our families. Correct. You know, we Correct. spend Christmas Correct. with our families, but because like. For foreigners, they they bloody it, it lah. But for your Alan yeah. Shearer's and all, when he was scoring on Boxing Day, I remember him saying yeah. on Manchester Day, he he loves Boxing Day because he gets a goal on Boxing Day, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah it's each to his own. But yeah, I I guess we'll speak about this a lot more, and this is all we really have time for this week. And mm. um, yeah, maybe uh, definitely a lot of honorable mentions to um, the teams across the league and and and, and big. Goal scoring weekend, and especially with Arsenal, I felt their Arsenal five nil. Especially, yeah. it was really good, and looking forward to see the youngsters uh, come up in, the, in in that team, and obviously go ahead against the mighty Manchester City this weekend. And mm. yeah, mm. we will be back to give you all the best analysis out there and everything. But L, one last question before we go: Jack Grealish or Elio Smith Rowe? Oh man, I think <laughs> I think I think on on current form. Yeah, I would say Emil Smith Rowe, man. I think I, 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 I'd, I'd go with <laughs> Emil yeah, Smith Rowe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Bukayo nice. Saka and Emil Smith Rowe. Yeah, definitely, Ooh. man. I mean, looking, at it, looking at it from from uh, yeah. current form, right? Grealish has been a little bit on and off. I think again for me, I think yeah. you know, yeah. looking at looking at City, dude. I think the ones where. I think their whole team is scary when you look at it against Arsenal. But hey, man, I mean, the upset could happen. Looking at, looking at how could. things are, definitely. Come on, could Robbie. Happen come on, happen. AFTV. Come on, you Gunners. <laughs> we believe in you. You can do this. Go yeah, on, Ateta. Yeah. You know? Go, go, go <laughs> on, Ateta. Or we could be hearing on, on, on Saturday, we could be hearing, I've had enough of this, Robbie Blood. I've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, for if you've listened so far. And um, this is all we have time for. Happy New Year. Have a great year ahead, definitely. But this year, not be the you know best of successes or whatever, but mm. be different. And, and um, Happy New Year from us at Alan Jerry. Take care. Happy New Year, guys. See you all soon. All Ciao. Right. Take care.